Hi, I'm Jonas Wehanico. Today we're going to take a look at the file meta field and what ways you can use it. So let's get started. So I've been going through each of the meta fields and today we're going to be working with the file one, which is a very interesting one because there's a few ways that can be used. Technically, the file meta field has two different types. There's a one that supports images and one that supports files. And depending which one you choose, you will have to work with it in slightly different ways. So for my example, I've already created two different definitions. One is a product, I just called it product types so that it will accept all file types. So for example, zip files or PDFs. Now the key thing about this file type is this file type is not one that you really display on the front end of the website, which is interesting. It's supposed to be downloadable. Now, when looking at this, I realized something that was interesting is that with this style file type, if we go down further, it doesn't really output this. So for example, if I use a PDF, it doesn't actually output the PDF to the front online store in my test, which is a little bit interesting in itself. It looks like this type is more meant for if you're working with API code. So if you're at that level of development, then you will be able to tap into this a little bit more. So probably more in the arena of the online store 2.0. Now there's also product image. Now product image, I'm able to work with by current th theme, which is not online store 2.0. This one will be great to use if you're outputting an image. So the idea I think behind these beta fields, at least going forward, is that in some way you are either working with it through a special advanced code or you're creating different sections to communicate more product value through the storefront, depending what you're using. So this product image would be additional images that just kind of sells what the product is. So this does not replace the product image gallery that is already built into Shopify, this is just, again, more selling point images that you could work into a theme, which is fascinating in itself. So I've already added these two different types. We're going to start adding the code. Now I'm going to focus on the code specifically for the product image, since that one does work with my current theme. I'll probably revisit the file reference one when I go through the series about the online store 2.0. All right, so how does this look? We're going to go to our theme here. Now I have many tabs, so let me quickly clean that up. All right, so we're gonna right click, open link a new tab. Again, make sure you're using a duplicate theme that is not live. Actions, edit code. And I already have it opened up to the section for this theme, which is the debut theme, um, which happens to be product hyphen template dot liquid. So I'm gonna scroll on down to find or my product description is being displayed, which is right here. Now I've already written out this code, but I'll explain it one more time what's going on here. Now there's a few different ways we can work with this. So I'm gonna erase the code that I already added. So one, we're just gonna directly access the product object to display meta fields, which in this case is that my underscore fields dot product underscore image. So if I go back to my previous tab, just for reference, we see that right here. So I added text just to help me further see what's being outputted here. So we're going to click save. Now I already have a tab open over here for my preview theme. So I'm going to refresh it just to see how this code works. And so what it does right now is it's showing you the ID for this actual file. So what we have to add to stylize it is what's called a media tag. Now there's a few ways we can work with the media tab. So we're going to add a pipe which that's what that's called, media tag. So media underscore tag, click save. So what this does right away is says, hey, this treat this as a media image. And there we go, now I'm at media image. Now there's more ways I can work with media images. For example, I can control how big it is and things like that. But for now, this is great. So this demonstrates what I was, the whole purpose of this video today, which is displaying a product image. Now to go further, <clears throat> we can go back to our docs, which are a wonderful place to look at. So this is a, it's actually technically a file reference in this case, but it's treating it slightly different. So if I click on a generic file object here, I can find how I can work with media tags. So we'll click that. And the link to this will be in the description below. 
So depending how I want to work with the code, as you can see here, I can use media underscore tag just to pull up already pre-made code to show this image. I could try out a few other approaches, for example, media URL. So if I bring that in for a moment, let's take a look at what that does for us. So again, there's that pipe. I'm just going to erase that and have the image underscore URL. Click save. And now I have the URL. So I can keep working with the fi filters just to work with how I want this to display. So let's try it one more time. Let's see if we can make the image bigger. So that will should show me the URL to the image that is slightly bigger. So how could I use this? Cool. I can see you doing that right there. So, oops, what did I do here? Mm -hmm. Oh, it did not like the 500 by 500. So with this image URL, so maybe it doesn't like that. Uh, I could wrap this in my own image tag, for example. So I can do image source equals quote like that. So I wrap this in quotes, hit save, which is the image tag in HTML. No errors, so let's refresh that. So it's giving me the small image view. So usually you can pull in the bigger image, which for some reason this time it was not liking that for some reason. It's pulling in the small instead of the bigger one. So I'll have to play with that a little bit more. I could work with it like this. Well, let's try this image size. Pull it in this way as well. Maybe that will work for me. Take a look, let's try it this way. So sometimes it's a trial and error to see which one works for the code here. Oh, it's really not, oh, I forgot the pipe, didn't I? Yes. There's the pipe there. There we go. Let's refresh the room. There we go. Awesome. So if I go further, there is another way to extend this with image underscore size and what size I'm pulling in. So it does, it uses the model. looks like the model viewer. And if I keep going further, it looks like there's more ways I can work with this than one. So this is great. This is exactly what I'm hoping to. So now I have a nice, lovely, inviting image just to sell this a little bit more. Like, look at this wonderful kids probably playing this game. Can't quite tell, but that sells the idea. Uh, so this is a great lead in feature to online store 2.0 where you can arrange and design your product pages a little bit more, create some templates that way. <clears throat> so this is where this is gonna become more of a great feature there for sure, because as you could tell, I would have to keep playing with where this code is positioned to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, but having said all that, this is a great, great tool in this regard that works really well. And curious to see how others will use this feature on their theme. So if you'd like to share me a link, I would love to see. Besides that, I hope you liked this video. Uh, be sure to subscribe, leave a comment down below. Uh, Consider supporting me and buy me a coffee as I keep creating these videos, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.